So this is the Doogee BL5000. It is a phone with a lot of unique characteristics, which when put together, give us a phone unlike we've ever seen before. Let's get started. A couple of years ago, no one would have even batted an eyelid at Doogee, but recently they've started doing some very interesting things. With the Doogee Mix, they created a near bezel smartphone at a budget level price point, and it was a very successful product. So that makes me particularly excited for this one. So this is the final retail box. It's got a glossy picture of the phone, glossy logo, and the rest of it is more or less matte. It's a nice contrast, but all in all, this box does not feel quite as premium as the one we saw on the mix. Another thing worth noting is on the side of the box, they've actually etched in two cameras, and that symbolizes the dual cameras on the smartphone. It opens up pretty nicely, and right on top we have the smartphone itself, which actually has a case on it by default. Then we have a little stand that holds the phone in. We have a really hefty power brick, and there's something quite interesting about this phone and its charging capabilities, which we'll get onto in just a moment. And then we have a USB to micro USB cable, no USB type C on this guy, instruction manual, pretty standard stuff. And we also have a warranty card, a plastic screen protector, which has a fairly nice looking microfiber cloth in it. And last but not least, we have the classic Doogee SIM ejector tool. And these are some of the better ones, as I pointed out in my other video. So in terms of the unboxing experience, that's not nearly as interesting as what we had on the Doogee Mix. And if you haven't seen that unboxing, you should definitely check that out. That was a fun one. But anyway, taking a look at the phone itself, we've got a case on it by default, which is an unusual choice. And it's quite a nice looking case. I mean, it's soft, it's silicon. It would probably protect you from a drop or two. And in terms of design, it's quite reminiscent of the back of the Galaxy S4. It has that same micro dot finish, but this time it's actually textured. It's quite nice. Right, so the smartphone itself. So I've got the blue version here, and there's something very interesting about the rear of this smartphone. So the company, for the first time ever, has created 15 different layers to refract the light in different ways. So in a similar vein to what we saw on the Honor 9, and that's reflective finish. But at the same time, the extent of this sort of light refraction effect isn't as impressive or isn't as extreme as what we did see on the Honor 9. So taking a look at the front of the phone, we're actually getting a quick glimpse of the specifications. And this is where it gets very interesting. It has a special 5,050 mAh battery in there, which number one is considered enormous on the battery scale, but number two, it's a fast charging battery. And it is very fast charging because within 10 minutes of plugging it in, you can be on 40% battery. And when you take into account 40% of 5,050 milliamp hours is no small number. So one of my first observations was just how ridiculous the screen protector situation is. We have a super flimsy plastic screen protector sitting on a Gorilla Glass 5 display, which is impressive by the way, but also the fact that it covers only three quarters of the screen makes it laughable. Now, this is a hefty phone. There is no getting about that. It has a really significant weight to it. Having said that, the company has employed something called the eight curve design. So as well as the rear four corners being slightly curved to make it a bit more comfortable to hold, the same is true for the front corners, which effectively means the front of the phone is a very flat dome. Ironically, even with this eight curve design, it still juts into the hand in a way which isn't exactly comfortable. When I spent a bit of time moving from different lighting conditions, trying to see the effect on the rear of the smartphone, my initial impressions of this hold. It is a cool finish, the effect is present, but it's just not that significant. There's nothing wrong with the fingerprint scanner itself, it's actually quite fast, but the fact that it's placed so far away from the standby button means that when you're turning the phone on, you're often shuffling around it a lot. So the display here really is quite interesting. It is a 1080p 5.5 inch IPS panel, and it's got really deep colors, really nice contrast, and in some senses actually reminds me of an OLED screen. The only place it falls down here is viewing angles, but it really makes up for that with this crazy level of brightness. Considering it's a budget phone, the 650 nit brightness here is higher even than that on the iPhone 7. So the BL5000 has another cool feature up its sleeve, a front facing flash. And whilst in theory I love the idea of it, the implementation here is a little bit hit and miss. For the most part, all it does is make the image look more washed out than it did originally, which completely takes the point away. Having said that, the rear dual cameras, which are both 13 megapixel sensors, were a complete contrast. They were a very nice surprise. In terms of the way they look, they're completely flush with the body, which is a good thing, but I do think the camera modules themselves don't exactly fit with the rest of the phone design. However, to my surprise, the lossless zoom works more or less perfectly. It really does zoom in two times, losing maybe 10% of the detail, if that. It's also got a very good shutter time, which means that in good lighting, you pretty much do not need to worry about blur on the photos. And detail is there too. These are two 13 megapixel sensors, so you're capturing a lot of information about the scene around you. Colors are vibrant as well, and even in lower lighting conditions as we start to turn the lights off, a lot of the detail is preserved. 
you have to be more careful about blurring the photos, but at the same time, the fact that it can even do this is impressive. The battery is everything we hoped it would be. Whether it's on standby or whether it's in use, it has an outstanding level of battery life. And the implication this has on its ability to charge quickly and have a lot of power in 10 minutes of charge is huge. It changes the way you actually use the device. You can wake up in the morning of going to work, have completely forgotten to charge it overnight, and it still won't be a problem. So then we've got the performance, and it's a pretty middling phone in terms of this. Scoring 43,000 on Antutu, this phone packs 4GB of RAM and the MT6750T. Whilst the RAM itself is pretty plentiful, you never really feel a lack of it when you're using the operating system, the CPU itself could be a bit better. In terms of handling the 1080p gaming, for the most part it does do a pretty good job. I wouldn't say this is a gaming phone, but at the same time it will play more or less anything you want it to, but at the same time if there was one place I would improve this phone, even if it cost an extra $50, I think that would be it. The phone is based off Android 7.0, with Doogee's own rather garish looking skin, which you can get rid of for the most part. The software also has quite a strong emphasis on using gestures to navigate your phone quicker, and whilst they're a little bit hit and miss in terms of their effectiveness, it's nice to have the options. One thing I did notice which was a bit of a shame is that the Wi-Fi antenna or the end Wi-Fi signal reaching this phone is just not that great. In rooms where other smartphones at the same price were getting signal fine, this one struggled just a little bit. Anyway guys, that is the Doogee BL5000. It is a very interesting phone. It's got a lot of unique features about it which phones at this price haven't even dreamt of having included. Combine that with a good display and then an absolutely killer battery and you do have an impressive phone on your hands. So with that being said guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video, I'm Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.